First, I offer my unlimited obeisances in the dust of the lotus feet of my most worshipful Diksha Guru Dev, Nichalila Pavishta Om Vishnu Pai, Astotra Satsi Shimai, Shilabhakti Vedanta Swami Prabhupada, and the same unlimited obeisances in the dust of the lotus feet of my most worshipful Shiksha Guru Dev, Nichalila Pavishta Om Vishnu Pai, Astotri Satsi Shimai, Shilabhakti Vedanta. Narayan Goswami Maharaj. You turn off the um, AC at the bottom, there's a black switch. To all of our Bodhiya Guru Varga and to all the assembled devotees, welcome. And I'm very happy today and honored today to speak on the subject of Sadhu Sangha. Generally, Sadhu Sangha means association with pure devotees, but I'm also going to speak about the benefits of association with regular devotees, especially at festivals. If we have an opportunity to uh, join in a bhakti yoga festival, a Hare Krishna festival, so many wonderful things happen because mostly we're alone and we're associating with our minds, which have, which have been carrying us from body to body in all species of life since the beginning of time. Now, that's not a very good association, is it? So, if you want to associate with uh, people who are following the bhakti process with kirtans and classes and taking prasadam together, doing bhajans, so what happens is we get many ideas by sharing uh, how to increase our service to the Lord or how to increase our service to the mission of the Lord. We develop uh, intimate relationships with each other on the basis of spirit rather than matter. Uh, if our uh, devotional practices have become weak from being alone or being uh, with people who are unfavorable to our bhakti, then conversely, being in that good association for any number of days that we can strengthens our practice and makes our practice more joyful. We get inspired we get a renewal in our spiritual life. My chanting might have been lazy. Maybe sometimes I chanted, sometimes I didn't. So this uh, revives my desire for pure bhakti. Then finally, uh, we make alliances like uh, buddy systems. You've heard of buddy systems uh, where I may meet a more advanced devotee who will uh, keep after me to make sure I'm doing my practices or practice with me, even uh, not live, but online or however, by WhatsApp or whatever. Or I may link myself up with a less advanced devotees and I may be his big buddy. Okay. So regarding association with devotees, um, there are many, many lectures that Srila Gurudev gave on the topic. And I'm going today to refer to one lecture that he gave in Australia in the year 2000, called The Value of Association with Pure Devotees. He said, I'm very happy that you've all come here from various countries uh, to hear Harikata and to chant together. It's a very good sign because now, now that I see that you're making a sacrifice to do this, I'm personally praying 
to Radha and Krishna and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to sprinkle upon you their causeless mercy for your empowerment to be free from the, the gobbling up of material energy, material allurements, and birth, old age, disease, and death. He said you're very fortunate. Even if you're lusty, greedy, angry, no matter. Just keep making your ears hear. And you're coming here to hear from pure devotees. He said it will not go in vain. Uh, whatever you want, he quoted Chaitanya Charitamrita. Sadhu Sangha, Sadhu Sangha, Sarva Shastra Koi, Lava Matra Sadhu Sangha, Sarva Siddhi Hoi. Simply by one eleventh of a second of pure devotional association can give all perfection. And why is it repeated, Sadhu Sangha, Sadhu Sangha? Because when you repeat something, I said that, I said it, I said it, then it's shows that there's an emphasis on it. So it gives Sarva City Hoy all kinds of perfections. If we want heavenly planets, if we want yoga cities, if we want Vaikuntha, all of these things can come. If I want Dwarka, Mathura, but if I want the highest thing, that is Braj, Braj Bhakti, and especially the maid servant of Srimati Radhika, which even Lord Krishna, who controls innumerable universes, wants to become that maidservant of Radhika, then that's also given by that Sarva Sangha, uh, Sadhu Sangha. Sadhu Sangha changes one's body. He gave the example of uh, a young man named Jana Sharma, and he was a gross materialist from India. And one night in a dream, Parvati, the wife of Lord Shiva, gave him a special mantra. He didn't know what that mantra was. She said it would fill, fulfill all of his desires. He didn't know what it was, but he kept chanting it. And as he chanted, day after day, week after week, month after month, his priorities in life started changing. And that started, his, his priorities dragged him to different associations with yogis, with mayavadis, with bhaktas. Um, and finally, he, um, actually his mantra was a gopal mantra because every living being is born with a swaroop or um, <coughs> the seed of a particular swarup or relationship with Krishna or spiritual body. And whatever that spiritual body is destined to be, which is our eternal form, uh, ultimately, as we advance, we come into association with a person who's an ocean of the uh, ocean of the moods that I aspire for when my taste for my pure existence becomes uh, is becoming manifest. Does that make sense? So um, gradually the Brahmin uh, met with uh, a cowherd boy named Swarup who in his previous life was Gop Kumar. And Gop Kumar had done sadhana bhakti, devotional practices, for hundreds of thousands of births. He was on Brahma Loka and Indra Loka and Jagannath Puri and uh, Ayodhya. He went everywhere by his mantra. He met Narada and Vaikuntha and Dwarka he went. And finally, uh, he entered into Goloka Vrindavan and Krishna welcomed him with an embrace, and they both rolled on the floor in ecstasy and fainted. So that same, now he's a coward boy, he came back to earth, and now just happens to meet this Brahmana, and he's telling him 
to give him faith in him, um, telling him all about his own practices for so many lives, and starting from when his guru, who was sent by Radhika, Jayanta, gave him that special mantra. And he was telling him all about the practices of bhakti and importance. So the uh, Brahmana, Jana Sharma, was very pleased to hear, but he wasn't getting any realizations. It was just like interest, some intellectual understanding. So what happened was uh, Gop Kumar put his hand on Jana Sharma's head and by that blessing, the both of them immediately ended up in Goloka Vrindavan and met Krishna face to face and that uh, Jana Sharma got his spiritual body. So Sadhu Sangha changes one's body, changes one's karma. It's stated in one of the songs of Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur that um, the Ganges gradually frees one from sins by repeated bathing in the Ganges with the right mood. But Sadhu Sangha, simply by saying a pure sadhu, sadhu uh, immediately all sins go far away. And Srila Gurudev quoted that out of all the 64 practices of bhakti, there are five that are most essential. Sadhu Sangha, Nama Kirtan, Bhagavat Shravan, Mathura Vas, that means living in any holy place like Mathura, Vrindavan, Jagannath Puri, Navadvip, and uh, Sri Murtir, uh, Shraddhaya Seva, serving the deity with faith. So Nam Sankirtan, um, hearing the Bhagavatam, living in a holy place, and serving the deity with faith, are, and Sadhu Sangha, are the five most important limbs of bhakti. But without Sadhu Sangha, that additional addition of that fifth limb, the other four won't, won't hardly have any effect. So that is so, so important to have that. Um, like when we're performing archan, we can learn in Sadhu Sangha how to gradually turn our archan into bhajan where and following Shula Raghunath Das Goswami, um, who bathed his deity with his tears and did arti with his sidelong glances because Raghunath Das Goswami was an internal consciousness in the mood of a maid servant of Srimati Radhika, looking at Krishna like that with sidelong glances. And there's a very interesting verse, um, also by hearing from the pure devotees, Gyane Priyasa, Udapasa, Namanta Eva, Jivanti San, Makaritam Bhavadiya Varatan. That is, uh, one doesn't have to change his ashram. If he's a householder, stay a householder. Uh, if he's a, whatever work he has, keep in that work, no problem. But hear the pastimes of Krishna from the pure devotees. And by doing that, Jita, that Lord, who is never conquered by anyone, becomes conquered by that devotee. And one other very important verse, is uh, vati riso bhavetivya that is one develops rati or ras ras means the beautiful pastimes with krishna on the mountain of govardhan in the kunjas with the gopis and by sadhu sangha and performing devotional service under the guidance of sadhu sangha automatically one develops intense greed for entering, or to speak of hearing, entering into those pastimes. So the pastimes come in the heart, the heart enters the pastimes, and I become free from the horrible pastimes that I'm uh, undergoing 
or overgoing like a broken record. And this person did that to me, and how can I get back? And my boss was just nasty to me. And my boss just fired me. And my wife just left me. And my kids don't love me. So those uh, illusory pastimes and emotions vanish with the appearance of entrance into the Lord's pastimes. And the chanting of Hare Krishna also gets the most benefit in Sadhu Sangha. Automatically, humility comes. If, if, uh, if I think I'm wealthy because I'm a millionaire, but then I'm in the association of a billionaire, then I become humble. I don't think I'm so great millionaire. So similarly, in the association of sadhus, pure sadhus, I automatically become humble, which is my key to success in chanting. That is, Trinadapi Sunni Chena, Tadodapi Sahishnana, Amanina Manadena Kirtaniya Sakadi. That one who is more humble than a blade of grass, more tolerant than a tree, offering all respects to others, and not desiring any for myself, then I could chant the holy name of the Lord constantly and in ecstasy. So I'm going to close by sharing an experience that I had uh, several years ago in the Alta uh, Festival in Russia, uh, sharing my experience. Like one of the things we did was we watched a video of Srila Gurudev with English and Russian subtitles. And generally I would see videos of him and Srila Prabhupada, but that was on one level of absorption, awareness, happiness. But when a lot of devotees see the videos together, or even hear a sound file together, it has tremendously more impact. And Maya has a lot harder time to break us and bring us into her camp. Like if I have one stick, I can easily break it. But if I have a big bundle of sticks, then it's much more difficult. So when we're bundled up together, then it's more difficult for Maya to break us. So we saw the video together. There were beautiful Bharat Natyam dances with the trained ladies and very beautiful classes. I remember Sri Padmini Maharaj gave a class on harmony from Srila Gurudev's harmony book, how to not be offended if we think somebody's um, abusing us or doing my upaman, uh, criticizing us, cheating us, and then how to not retaliate, you know, the tricks of being free from resentment and anger, and also uh, discussing the dangers of criticizing others, because I make a bridge to the, to the qualities that I'm criticizing, and then by the same bridge, the qualities come back and live in me. So I hate that person. That means hatred starts living in me, and then all my cells get filled with hatred, and I get sick, and my brain gets sick. Uh, and so many beautiful kirtans and bhajans together, which give us the mood, the bhajans give us the mood for chanting uh, purely. So I'm going to end here. Thank you all very much for coming and look forward to see you soon. Panchiko Bhutu Vyastra Kabasindi Bhavacha, Patitanam Pavane Bhyo Vaishnavi Bhyo, Namo Namaha.